says there is no prison. Hi everyone, this is Megan. We're gonna get started in a few minutes. Okay, everyone, um, thanks for joining us today. Welcome to our webinar, Native Video Advertising. I'm Megan Morelli, I'm the Senior Content Marketing Manager with Taboola, and I'm gonna moderate today. Um, just for a little bit of background, Taboola is the world's leading discovery platform that works with advertisers and publishers globally. We enable over 1.4 billion people to discover what's new and interesting at new moments when they're most ready to explore. Wibbits, who we're doing the webinar with today, is an online creation platform that makes video projection quick and easy for brands, agencies, publishers, and marketing teams. Joining us today is Matt Talmadge, the Director of Demand Generation from Wibbits, and Rachel Zalta, our Global Head of Research and Insights. Um, they're gonna be talking to you about native video advertising. So just a couple of housekeeping notes before we get started. You can submit any questions that you might have in the questions module in your GoToWebinar control panel, um, and we'll try to get to them at the end of the session if we have time. Thanks so much, and let's get started, guys. I'll hand it over to you. All right, thanks, Megan. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Matt Talmadge, the Director of Demand Generation here at Wibbits. Like Megan said, our platform makes it super easy for anyone to create video, even if you don't have any production experience. And then before this, I was the Director of Marketing at Crossover for five years where our technology helped sports teams break down video of all of their games, get advanced stats and create highlight reels. So I'm definitely no stranger to the importance of video, you know, especially when it comes to growing a business and definitely excited to dive in further with you today. And I'll hand it over to Rachel. Thanks, Matt. Um, okay, so this is uh, me. My name is Rachel Zalta. I head up the research and insights efforts in Taboola. My background is a little bit different. So I actually have an MA in social psychology. So my focus is always going to be like, um, how does how do people behave from the psychological perspective? 
Um, I've worked for a couple of startups uh, that that uh, did something similar, and I've been at Taboola for three and a half years. Um, when my primary job here is really to study that online behavior, look at why people are behaving that way. And of course, this is based on, on the millions of data points that we gather every single day. So actually, we'll start with a, with a poll, a question to the audience. Um, so the question is, how many brand messages do you think you see in one day? Well, not really not not everybody who wants to. I feel like people just don't care. But like, if it was legal in the state of New York and in New York City to do. Okay, so we we see. Oh, here here's the quick poll. So we have a few different options here. Um, the first one is between one to ten brand messages, ten to a hundred, a hundred to a thousand, a thousand to ten thousand, and over ten thousand. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's just a whole thing. We'll give you guys just a couple more seconds to respond. Looks like most people say between 100 and 1,000 brand messages a day. Okay, nice. Uh, so that's closer than what most people usually tell me. According to a study that the American Marketing Association ran, um, the average person in the United States sees 10,000 brand messages in one day, um, which is a really, really crazy number, right? Um, how many, how much time are we even awake in one day? So I tried to calculate that. Um, we're awake for around a thousand minutes in one day. Um, if we're awake for a thousand minutes and we see 10,000 brand messages, then what that means is that in every given moment, we are being exposed to 10 different brand messages. What that means to marketers is that marketers have to work really, really hard in order to succeed and really deliver their brand message in an impactful way. So that's what we're going to try to focus on today, uh, Matt and I. Yeah, that's just a crazy amount of branding. And I think like uh, when we talk about so many different brand messages competing for your attention in so many different ways, why is video the medium that we're talking about today? What makes it so special? And I think it's, you know, if you've been paying attention to any digital media over the past few years, then I don't really need to convince you that video content is king. I mean, chances are it's already dominating your social media feeds, the ads that you see, uh, your entertainment choices, maybe even the websites you visit. And there are definitely some good reasons for this. Uh, so on this slide, you can really see what I mean. And yeah, this is a pretty long list of stats and numbers, but they do tell uh, a really powerful story. Uh, first and foremost, you can see just how effective video is at capturing people's attention. So search engines like Google have really figured this out, and now they're going to prioritize pages that contain video in their search results. So that means just by putting video on your website, you can rank higher in, in Google search results than, than if you don't. And that's why these pages are seeing 157% more organic search traffic just by adding video. And so this creates like a big feedback loop because once people are there on your website, they spend 88% more time on a landing page that includes video. So that will then increase the domain authority of your website in the eyes of the search engine which then elevates that page in the search results even more. Uh, so it's one big giant feedback loop that hopefully will keep increasing your organic search traffic. So that has you covered on the organic side and on the paid side of things, social ads that contain video receive 22% more clicks than those without. So, you know, it might be a bit more expensive up front to produce video ads, but it's a great way to boost your ROI in the long run because you can use that video and reduce your cost per click. And then finally, the last few bullet points here really hammer home the fact that videos are just better at telling stories. And that's something I think we firmly believe here at Wibbits is that video is just the most effective storytelling tool. And you can see this, people process information 60,000 times faster, they recall it six times easier, and they just plain enjoy it a lot more when it's delivered with video. 
And I think that's because of how well videos convey emotion and they're just a lot more fun. So on that note, I'll pass it back to Rachel and talk about why brands really should focus on making things fun. Yeah, so on the note of fun, um, psychologists tried to explore, or actually in this experiment, it's actually Volkswagen that tried to explore this in 2009. They wanted to understand what fun actually means. And in order to understand this, um, what they did is they, uh, try, they tried to get more people to use the staircase versus the escalator in one day by making the staircase more fun, or they gamified the staircase. They made it into a huge piano, as you see from the picture, while when you stepped on different stairs, it actually produced music. Now on that day that it was more fun to use the stairs, how many more people do you think use the stairs? So the answer is that 66% more people use the stairs in a day that it was more fun. So Matt was talking about video um, being a medium that's really fun for people. Um, this is a little bit of an explanation of um, why fun motivates behavior. Yeah, I think, you know, just to jump in really quick, like that's one thing I really want to take away from this webinar, even back to my own day to day, because I think like running the demand gen efforts at Wibbit, sometimes like I'll get lost in overanalyzing a particular maybe call to action or even like A-B testing button copy and really getting into the weeds like that. But I think the secret really to getting people to take any action that you, you want them to take as a marketer is really to figure out a way to make it fun. I think that's just a, a great uh, great thing to put into practice. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's one of the main reasons why people have actually become obsessed with video. So we tried to dig into the stats and the numbers and we found that people spend more than four times more time on digital video than they do playing with their children. And playing with our children is really important. So the fact that we're spending four times more time on digital video means that we're really enjoying digital video. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's a crazy stat again. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, now that all of those children are getting older and they've been around their parents who are consuming so much video, it makes sense that Generation Z is, uh, you know, particularly obsessed with video, even more so than the average population. And uh, really to back this up, we just put out a report at Wibbits, which you can download on our website. And here are some of the stats that we found. The, the biggest one that really jumps out only 9% of Generation Z said that they share more articles than videos. So there's a big reason why going viral refers primarily to video. If you want someone to share your message, especially if that person is a member of the younger generations, video is absolutely the way to go. And then here's another stat that, that really just hammers this home. Uh, Generation Z spends almost 90 more minutes a day watching videos than they do reading articles. And they're reporting that that's three and a half hours per day online watching videos for Generation Z. That's a crazy amount of time. So if you want to talk about a captive audience, you definitely have one right there. Yeah, that is crazy amount of time, three and a half hours. Um, <laughs> So that's like, that's video in general, right? The power of, of video as a medium. And, and now I wanna, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, native video. So why native video? For whoever isn't familiar with what native video is, there's a quick demonstration on the right. Um, so here you'll see that somebody goes into their favorite publisher site, they'll be reading an article, and when they get to the bottom of the article, they'll actually see a feed of interesting content that includes a lot of different types of content. And one of the types of content, like right here, is, is actually video that plays. I'm actually gonna take a step back from native, and I wanna just talk about having a brand message, specifically a video brand message, and thinking about what, what, how important is the context um, in delivering this message, and what are the things that you wanna keep in mind when you choose which content context to be in. Um, so in order to talk about that, I'm gonna start with an experiment. Um, I love this experiment. Uh, this, this is an experiment with a guy called Joshua Bell, who is a very famous musician, a very fam famous violinist in the United States for whoever uh, appreciates music. Um, Joshua Bell would perform his beautiful music and people would spend hundreds of dollars to hear him play. And one day he took his $3.4 million violin 
and he took it to the metro station in Washington, D.C., and he played his music there. And the question is, how many people do you think stopped and listened to Joshua Bell? And how much money do you think he made in that day? <laughs> and the answer, sad. what'd you say? It's probably going to be a sad amount. <laughs> so the study, they reported that 16 people stopped and they uh, looked at him or listened to him for a few seconds and moved it along. I think one person recognized him. So he actually stayed and appreciated it for a minute or two. Um, and he made, I think it was $28 that day. Okay. And what this study, what it shows us is that the context of where your brand is going to appear is actually really crucial for the success of, of your brand and for the, the impact that your brand message is going to have in the end of the day. So the first thing I wanna talk about when I, when I do talk about the, um, the context and what kind of things you wanna keep in mind is the multiple source effect. This is actual, this is like a real psychological effect. What it means is that if you didn't know Joshua Bell, but you heard from your father that he's really good, and then you heard from your neighbor that he's really good, and then you heard from your colleague that he's really good, and then you heard two strangers talking about him. So many people were saying that he's really good. What do you start believing? You start believing that he's pretty good, right? That's a multiple source effect. When you have a brand message, you wanna try to uh, get it to appear in a lot of different places, in a lot of different sources. Specifically on native, you're able to let your video appear on a lot of different publisher sites, which is like different sources. But what we really recommend is to have a diverse marketing mix. So to really promote your video in, in a lot of different places. The next thing that I suggest keeping in mind is what is called again in psychology, the reputation effect. It's a kind of halo effect for whoever's familiar with that. So if you didn't know Joshua Bell, but you knew that he performed in the best place to perform in your city. So here, this is like the Lincoln Center in New York. Um, what do you automatically think about him? Okay, you think he's probably really good, right? They're not gonna let him perform there unless he was really good. And that same reputation effect happens with your brand message as well. So if your video is going to appear in a high quality space or a high quality site, that's gonna say something about your video as well. And people are going to, um, they're going to look at your video and perceive it in a different way. Um, they're going to perceive it as more high quality. So this is another point that's important, um, making positive associations with your brand. So if Joshua Bell was playing his music and it was in the uh, subway station or the metro station and it got kind of smelly in there, so what does that do to how you feel about Joshua Bell or his brand? You're probably like, okay, this isn't so good, right? And so you wanna make sure to really be able to control as much as you can what is going to be before, after, and around your video while it's playing. Um, this is another really important point. And then I think this is probably one of my, one of the most important points. So if you were running to work, and Joshua Bell stood in front of the, the entrance of the train and he said, you can't enter until you listen to me playing. So how would you feel? You're probably pretty annoyed, <laughs> right? Matt, I like the facial expressions. <laughs> you're probably really annoyed, right? Because like you're running to work. You have one specific goal in mind. And even if you like Joshua Bell and his music, right now he's actually... You're, you're actually start developing negative associations with him and his music. And even if you end up listening to him just because you want to get on the train, it doesn't mean that it, 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 it made a positive impact. It probably made a negative impact if it was an intrusive experience. Yeah, I'm trying to think of how good someone would need to be at playing the violin to make me actually stop uh, in the middle of one of my commutes. <laughs> yeah, so we actually ran an interesting study um, and we try to understand how the same exact video ad can have a different impact depending on the context. And what we found is that when the same exact video ad appeared either in feed bottom of the article, which is the native ad experience, native video experience, or in the middle of the article or pre-roll, what we found is that people rated the same exact video as 2.4 times more favorable 
One is it was in that non-intrusive bottom of the article um, experience. When we looked at, at um, how much attention or how, how focused they were, we found that um, when it was an intrusive experience, as you can see here, the red is where they were looking on the screen. And as you can see, they were looking all, all over the screen while the video was playing in an intrusive experience. Versus when it was a non-intrusive experience, here's where people were actually focused on the video and on the content while it was playing. Yeah, and so I think, you know, obviously you want to avoid being intrusive, but that doesn't mean that you need to abandon all video ads. Like the context definitely matters and, and these stats will definitely back that up as well. Um, two thirds of Americans report not even using an ad blocker and 85% of them said they'd rather watch ads in exchange for free access than they would pay a small subscription fee to remove the ads. So if that's the case, then video ads can't really be that intrusive as long as you're doing them right. And so when we talk about doing it right in, in this context, I think it means a couple of things. But as you can see uh, from some of the stats to the right here, uh, most notably people wanted videos uh, that they could enjoy without sound. Um, and they also wanted ads that were very targeted and very relevant to them. So all of the data and segmentation capabilities on all of the ad platforms that are out there, um, you should really use them to your advantage and they'll help you solve this targeting problem. And then from there, you know, you can use a platform like Wibbits to create short form video at scale. And that's really, really perfect for being able to make lots of different variants for all of your different audience personas and not you know, spending hours and hours on each video, you're just able to make hyper-targeted content that really resonates with each of those different personas. And that I think leads us into talking about some of the creative best practices that we wanna to touch on. We talked about the context, where your video should live, how you should surround yourself uh, with those positive associations. But now we'll talk about, you know, what you should actually include in the video in order to make as possible. And I think we're going to start off uh, with another poll question. And this is about what do you guys think is the optimal length for a video if you want to get as many views as possible? We'll give you guys a couple more seconds. Majority, 61% think 32 seconds. So you guys are definitely on to something. Shorter is definitely sweeter, although there is maybe such thing as too short. Um, if we wanna look at uh, some of the stats that we collected from the videos in our platform, it seems like that sweet spot is actually around 51 seconds uh, to increase video views. and. And it's anywhere between 47 and 51 seconds is kind of the best balance between uh, video views in general and highest completion rate. So that tends to be, uh, you know, the range that you want to stay within is, is around 51 to 47 seconds at the shortest. And I think that gives you probably the best balance. But uh, you definitely were on the right track with the trend. Um, and then that leads us into our first creative best practice, which is to keep your videos short. And so, you know, the reason for this is pretty obvious. Attention spans are definitely dwindling. We talked about how many brand messages are, you know, competing fiercely for your attention, 10,000 brand messages a day. Uh, you need a way to break through the noise and you can't do that with, you know, a long arduous message that takes a long time for somebody to comprehend. And, you know, I think that's why video is so important. The good news is we went over how much faster the human brain processes video. Uh, so you have the luxury of being able to present your information really succinctly uh, in this medium and you can still have it resonate. Uh, on this screen, you can see a breakdown of how many videos the average person will watch on a website broken down by device. Um, so if you look all the way to the right there, 
uh, a very short green bar. If your audience is primarily on mobile, you might only have one shot to get them to view your message. And chances are they're probably gonna stop watching somewhere in that 47 to 51 second range. Uh, so that means you know the challenge is gonna be on really writing an effective script and a storyboard for your video and making sure that it's front loaded with the most important information and you're giving people you know, a nice uh, fun way to consume your message and, the, and they have a reason to stick around. And then here on this next chart, you know, we can see even more evidence for this. Mobile, once again, is the culprit where drop off is much more likely. And obviously people are juggling a million things. They're multitasking, they're in the middle of their commute, uh, and maybe a violinist is in their way and they have to put their phone away. Uh, less than half of all videos are watched until the end uh, when they're viewed from a mobile device. Yeah, that's super interesting. Um, what I want to do now is I actually want to dig into the psychology, which is like what I am excited about. Um, so I want to I want to talk about a study that I like to call the case of the ugly chicken. Um, so in this study, they showed participants these two pictures. They told them that the chicken on the left is um, a health, uh, a, sorry, a natural chicken, and the chicken on the right is genetically engineered. Then they told Group number one, that this chicken is healthy and that this chicken is tasty. And they told group number two that this one is tasty and this one is healthy. I know it's getting a little complicated, so hopefully you're with me. Now, if people made decisions based on logic and they cared more about how healthy the chicken is, not about how tasty it was, so which chicken would they choose? Well, if they were in group number one, they would probably choose chicken number one. And if they were in group number two, they would probably choose chicken number two because we told them that that one was healthier. And if people made decisions based on logic and they cared more about how tasty the chicken was, not how healthy it was, so which chicken would they choose? Well, if they were in group number one, they would probably choose the genetically engineered chicken. If they're in group number two, they would probably choose the natural chicken. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> what ended up happening is that all participants chose, which chicken? All participants One. chose, <laughs> they all chose the pretty chicken, right? They all chose the natural looking chicken. And what this study and actually many other studies proved to us is that as humans, we make our decisions based on how we feel based on our emotions towards something, towards a brand or towards a chicken, not based on logic at all. So when we think about emotion and video, one of the things that I really recommend is including more and more emotion in your video when possible. Um, so when we analyzed the videos in Taboola, what we found is that videos that included some kind of emotion actually got 138% higher viewability rate and completion rate. But there's something else about this slide that's attracting your attention, not only her emotional gaze. So her hair is moving, right? That's kind of grabbing your attention. And that's the second recommendation. Um, and that's talking about motion or movement. Um, so if I was in the jungle and I was trying to survive, how important would it be for me to detect something moving in the side of my eye? It'd be really important, right? Because that thing that's moving, it could be something dangerous or it could be food. And so humans and animals too have developed an instinct to look towards things that are moving. Online behavior studies found that when we scroll down a page and we see something moving, moving or any kind of animated object, it's almost impossible for us to ignore it. We have to look towards it. So when we think about videos, we want to definitely make them short, include emotion, but also try to include activities that have a lot of movement. When we analyze the data in Taboola, um, we looked at different action types in the video in regards to the completion and viewability impact. And what we found is that action types that included a lot of movement, like stretching, shouting, dancing, swimming, climbing, surfing, 
got a much higher viewability rate and completion rate, as opposed to action types that didn't include a lot of movement, like speaking, sleeping, tanning, and texting. So this is one of my favorite best practices, or when we think about video, my favorite strategy. Um, this is about being authentic. So I don't know how many of you are like, movie watchers. I, I love watching like romantic movies. And, and one of my favorite things to do is actually stick around for the bloopers in the end of the movie. Um, you know, when the character in the movie you know, says something by mistake and then starts cracking up. According to psychologists, um, when we have authentic characters in a movie, what happens is it creates intimacy with the person that's watching the video and the person that's in the video or with the brand that's promoting the video. Now that's what brands want to achieve, right? A, a deep connection, intimacy between their consumers and, and their brand message. So one of, the days of, one of the ways of doing that in a real impactful way is by really being authentic. Now as brands, you could do that. There are a lot of different ways to do that. Um, for example, choosing a, choosing a person that's going to be in your video that's not like, you know, a gorgeous, perfect model, just someone that people could relate to more. Or if someone makes a tiny bit of a mistake in the video, consider leaving it in instead of cutting it out and making it 100% perfect. Interestingly, <laughs> when we analyzed the data in Taboola, what we found is that we looked at uh, standard quality videos versus very, very high quality videos. And we found that standard quality videos actually did better in regards to both the viewability rate and the completion rate, which is kind of surprising when I saw this. But I really do think that it relates to um, the, that authenticity. When we watch a video and it's like staged and perfect, it feels to us a little bit less real, a little less authentic, too professional. And we usually tend to leave it earlier. And for trying to engage our audience fully, try to be a little bit more authentic. Yeah, I think this chart is super interesting. I think we talk to so many marketing teams at Wibbit that are spending, you know, so many resources on just making sure that their uh, every video asset is extremely polished and as perfect as it can be. Uh, but you know, this definitely supports that. I, I think it could be a better use of resources to really focus on the process and make sure you're able to churn out lots of video content. Um, that's speaking to really relevant topics and keeping people engaged. And, and maybe as you like add those extra layers of polish, it gets further removed maybe from that human touch that I think makes videos so relatable when they're, when they're done right. Um, but really good insight there. Yeah, so one of the other tools um, that we recommend using is, that, is called trends.tabula.com. Um, so this is a website that what it does is it takes all of the content that ran on Taboola's network every single week and it'll analyze it to give you creative recommendations based on what's actually working at the moment. So we have a lot of different uh, tools in this site. The interesting tool for now is the video trends. So we analyze all the videos running on Taboola and we try to understand which action types, like driving, swimming, or stretching, are doing best in terms of either the viewability rate or the completion rate. You can filter either or. And if you scroll a little bit lower, which you can, I think, on the slide, um, you'll also be able to see video characteristics, things like if there's a person in the video or if there's not a person in the video, if it's black and white or colorful. Um, so that's an, another interesting way to understand what's working right now. And when you do put together your video um, through Wibbits or through any other platform, you're really able to, um, it gives you direction as to what kind of creative you want to use or what kind of video you want to put together. Yeah, that's an awesome resource. And, and definitely like looking at the different actions that increase viewability is, is really, really valuable information for somebody to have when they're putting together a video. And it also supports my theory that the world needs more Instagram stories of me dancing, uh, which I think is, is is really positive. So uh, I just needed to shout that out. 
Uh, still on the trends topic, uh, one of the great features about Wibbits is our top stories feature. And that's where our editorial team actually creates video content that's reacting to trending topics, breaking news, uh, pop culture stories. Um, and then our customers can actually log in and rebrand those videos with just a couple of clicks. And they can share them with their social audiences, uh, share them on their websites, complete with all of their own branding. And so this feature has really led us to some interesting insights about what topics and stories get the most attention. And so on that note, we'll throw it to one more poll for you guys. Um, this is about which subjects do you think resulted um, in the most shared or the most interesting uh, videos to uh, those rebrands last year. So which topics or subjects were, were most popular? Give you guys a couple more seconds. A lot more disparity here. The majority, 38% think Trump's tweets, 34% thought women celebrities, and 28% thought natural disasters. Wow, so a pretty, pretty even split across the board. Actually, the, the answer overwhelmingly was that uh, female celebrities were dominating the social conversation and actually uh, people were staying away from video coverage of Trump's tweets and natural disasters, uh, probably because those things just aren't very much fun. And I think it does come back to like creating those human connections. And so Beyonce, Cardi B, Demi Lovato, they all ranked super high uh, on our list of most shared top stories. Also, Black Panther stayed near the top for almost the entire year. Um, and again, you can kind of see that human connection. And, and I think it tracks through also um, to the topic you can see kind of at the bottom of this slide, which was live event coverage. So I think if you've ever been on Twitter, maybe during a big sports game uh, or an award show or an episode of The Bachelor even, uh, you know that those like candid real time uh, reactions are super popular. And I think, um, you know, that's because people want to feel that connection and they want to feel like they're experiencing something together and, and hear various viewpoints. And so that's our goal with the Wibbit's top stories feature is to allow, you know, brands to react to those trending topics with which with almost no latency and be able to kind of jump into the conversation. Um, and so on that note, uh, we can show you. Uh, one of our most popular videos, I actually think this was the most popular video, was about Jay-Z and Beyonce dropping a uh, surprise joint album. It's a super cool tool, by the way. <laughs> I wonder what's trending right now. Like, what's the top story right now? That I don't know, but we do kind of do a digest of them. Uh, like every Monday, we kind of look at look at the week back, and it's always kind of a fun experiment to see like what has stood the test of like having this super short news cycle, like what actually comes out on top. Sometimes it's not always the the things that you think it's going to be. Uh, so there are always some nice surprises when we when we take a look at those. Sorry, guys, we're having a little bit of technical difficulty playing the video, so I'm just going to move on. Oh, that's okay. Uh, we're, we are going to send this out um, to everybody uh, after the webinar. So if you do want to take a look, we'll make sure there's a, a link to the video in there. Um, so don't worry about that. Sorry about that. Um, so I think, you know, we're starting to, to wrap things up here. We are going to get to some of your questions at the end, but I think before we do that, it's important to leave you with a few final takeaways and really kind of sum up uh, what we've gone over today. Uh, so on the creative side, I think a few of the things that we really want you to take away from this webinar, um, if you're gonna make really powerful videos is to make sure the videos are short and sweet. Um, and when you're writing your script, you know, make sure that you're condensing your message as much as possible. Um, we want you to convey you know, powerful emotions and, and incorporate emotion as much as possible into the subject matter, into the creative. Um, and then we want you to include lots of movement and lots of action. 
uh, we talked about, you know, how drawn humans are to that motion and how that it's really hard for people to ignore um, messages that have lots of motion in them and just be as authentic and relatable and as human as possible. Um, and if you follow kind of those four main tips, uh, the video creative that you come out with is going to be so much more effective. Awesome. And then in regards to the context, so where, what you want to keep in mind when you choose where to promote your video. Um, here, I, I highly suggest keeping in mind the multiple source effect. So trying to appear in as many different sources as you can. Uh, keeping in mind the reputation effect. So trying to appear in high quality space, in a high quality space. Um, remembering positive associations, so try to surround your video with, with positive things or at least uh, content that you could control. And then, of course, really try to keep away from intrusive experiences. Um, and so, as I mentioned, we are going to send the deck out after the webinar is over, but um, if you want to dive deeper into really any of the stats or topics that we covered today, you can download some of our free resources. And this is where uh, a lot of the charts and graphs that we presented today came from. Um, so when you get the deck, feel free to click through any of these links and you'll be taken to, to those resources. Or if you can't wait, they're all available right now on Wibbits.com. And the last thing to mention is that you know, if you are someone that's looking for a scalable way to, to put all of these creative tips into practice and to start creating really effective videos, you can schedule a demo with us at Wibbits and we'll show you how to create video content really quickly, really easily. You don't need to learn any sort of, uh, or have any sort of production experience. It's a great solution really for anyone on your team to feel empowered to create video. And as a bonus, if you're already an existing Taboola customer, you can get 15% off any Wibbits plan. Just go to wibbits.com slash Taboola and sign up uh, and you'll receive an email with all the information that you need. Awesome, thank you so much guys. Um, we do have a few minutes left for questions and we got a lot of really great questions from our audience today. So just to start, and this can go to either one of you, um, somebody asked, you guys have been talking a lot about fun and fun in videos. What if the product or service you're selling is not fun? Do you have any um, creative ideas for, for videos based on any of the studies you've been talking about for products that could be perceived as a little less fun? Hmm. So uh, I've done marketing in the past for uh, like e-commerce tools that were really focused on just like increasing revenue, a lot of financial data. Uh, and so that inherently doesn't have a lot of, uh, I guess, fun <laughs> really associated to it. So uh, it, it was definitely a challenge. But um, one thing that we ended up doing with video was actually talking to a lot of our customers about um, what they did with all of the, you know, extra money that they were making by using our uh, e-commerce tools. And like, we'd show them going on vacations or one guy just basically like quit his full-time job uh, and would go surfing in random places around the world. So we did uh, a video series about him and really just tried to like kind of relate it to the lifestyle changes or the lifestyle freedom that, that, you, could, uh, that you could achieve with like some extra revenue. So sometimes it's about like, it's not about like finding a direct way to just promote the product, but think about the outcomes that that maybe uh, you're providing for the customer or, or kind of get creative about, you know, what maybe the, the data within the, pro uh, the product is, is going to tell you and try to tell some like fun stories like that. Um, but yeah, it can be it can definitely be a challenge and it definitely takes some some creativity. Yeah, I love that. Um, that's a that's definitely a, a cool idea, Matt. Um, but it's definitely hard. Like I've worked with brands as well that, you know, their product just wasn't as fun. And I think when we talk about fun, it's fun is like pretty general. Um, one of the things that I've seen these brands do is actually they didn't like they couldn't. They, it was harder for them to make it, their video fun. So what they did is they actually made their creative more clever. Right. So like when we talk about fun, it's like fun and entertainment. People are enjoying to watch the video. So it doesn't only have to be like fun, like equal 
meaning not serious. It could also be entertaining or, you know, thought provoking or clever or like a cool play on words, you know, like um, I think that all kind of could go into that same category of fun or entertaining and, and really get people to want to engage with your video, which I think is, is the ultimate goal. Yeah, and I think that's, again, like it makes video so important too, even for like those products or services that might be just a little bit more boring, like you should be leaning more heavily on video because it inherently will make it more fun for people to be digesting your your message. So it actually like, yeah, you should get creative and think about like fun topics to cover in the videos, but just by making that switch to video, you're gonna be helping yourself out, you know, even more. So on that same creative note, um, it's, it's a generally accepted practice that the first visual and social video and other types of video needs to be striking for users to stick around. So we talked a lot today about like best practices for your entire video, but do you guys have any recommendations for the sorts of strategies for like video characteristics that you might need to have happen first in your video for, for more success? I think hmm. movement is really crucial there. So we spoke about movement and like incorporating movement into your video and like action types with a lot of movement. I think it's especially important for the beginning of the video because that's gonna be like a scroll stopping, right? You're gonna scroll and then you're gonna notice that movement which is gonna make you look at it and then engage with the video. That's gonna like get you to start engaging. I actually, um, I was talking with somebody in Facebook and they recommend the same exact thing. So um, yeah, they, they say that uh, including a lot of movement is really important for those five first seconds in videos. And that's the same thing we're seeing on our end. Matt, any thoughts? Yeah, I, I was going to come back to, to movement again and just making sure that, uh, you know, if you're using like an intro bumper or something like that, that, that it's not just kind of like your logo static kind of in the, in the middle of the screen, but um, there's some kind of nice uh, intro effect happening. Maybe there's lots of color. Um, and definitely using as much motion as possible and, and, and really kind of bringing it to life. And uh, if it is an image or a static image, looking to try to animate it somehow and just like really try to capture the attention uh, immediately. And then from there, I think it is about putting kind of the value add first. Like when you think about the message, it's like, why should somebody stick around for more than five seconds? Like what's gonna make them uh, stop scrolling through their their feed and actually want to view what you have to say. I think you know telling them what they can expect to get out of the video or what the value add you're going to bring in the first few seconds of the message is is really important as well. So um, Tabula and Wibbits aside, do you guys have um, any advice for very lean video teams or maybe even a video team of one? Um, my advice is try to use as much user generated content as possible to tap into your customer network, see if people, um, you know, can send you even self shot videos of them explaining, you know, what their experience has been with your product and, or answering a particular question that would be really valuable information to have, uh, for the different personas that you're marketing to. Is there a particular, uh, challenge that, your customers can speak to that that maybe other potential prospects are facing too and, and can you like edit those those sound bites down into like a really helpful compilation of tips and tricks um, something like that could could work really well um, so I think like if you're super lean and you're not going to go out and like shoot stuff yourself um, you do need to kind of find ways to source things and, and get creative and I think user generated content is is an interesting one. Yeah, I'm, I I agree, Matt. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> I, think, I think like maybe this relates to authenticity too, because like you don't need a large team to put together like a good video. Really, you could, you know, put together something simple, and that might, you know, if it's engaging and if it's a if it's a good message, it's going to work. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we have two questions. Um, we have time for two questions left. One I'm gonna ask directly to Rachel and one directly to Matt. Um, so Rachel, first, um, the study that you showed us on video quality, can you talk a little bit more about how you define standard quality and high quality and just maybe dive a little bit deeper into that study? We got a few questions on exactly how you make an authentic video. 
Yes, that, that is a good question. I worked with our analysts on that. Um, uh, and what we did is we looked at standard quality as like the average quality that most videos were using um, on our network. Um, and then we enlarged, like we, we made uh, the range bigger. So it wasn't only the average, um, like the average, I'm sorry, how do I explain this? Um, we took the majority of videos and then we took the extreme videos that had like much higher quality, like much higher than the average. I don't know that uh, the specific numbers, I'm sorry, <laughs> but it was much higher than the average. Um, and it was like the top percentile or the top, you know, two percentiles. Um, and those are the videos that we compared with, uh, with the average. Hope that makes sense. Awesome, thank you. Um, and then Matt, so we got some questions about music and video and wondering if you could speak to this in terms of Generation Z a little bit and is music important in videos? Do you see that it helps perform better? Do you see that it helps um, incite more of an emotional response and just generally should music be used in videos? Uh, yeah, I definitely think anything, you know, music is such an emotional, um, you know, medium that like anytime you're trying to bring more emotion to your message um, and to your creative, I think music is a great way to do that. So uh, I would say, you know, experiment with different soundtracks, but like try to use stuff that does complement whatever the message is in the video and also brings uh, that emotion to the forefront and, can, and does a nice job at conveying whatever that emotion is that you, you know, want to bring forth in that video. That said, um, I would, you know, focus more on making sure that the visuals within the video are are the most important thing. I wouldn't get yourself too bogged down in the soundtrack. We know that a lot of people are viewing videos without sound, especially like when it's in a setting where it's an advertisement or something like that. Um, so, you know, I would not rely solely on the music. I'd make sure that, you know, you're focused on captions, you're focused on making sure that um, all the visuals are resonating, but music, you know, can only help the cause when it comes to bringing emotion to the table. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Rachel and Matt, for, for sharing all of your video insights with us today. And thank you for all the attendees who joined. Um, I know there's some questions that we didn't get to, and we'll see if we can address those after the webinar. Um, and we'll be sharing the webinar recording in the deck with you guys as well. So, um, that's it, and thanks everyone for joining, and we hope to see you again. Thank you. Bye everyone, thank you.